Okay, all we are recording. All right. Yeah, thank you. Well, good afternoon. This is the May 6th meeting of the House Opportunity Commission. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to call a roll of commissioners of present. Commissioner Coombe. Commissioner Coombe. I'm sorry, I'm here. Okay, Commissioner Simon. Present. Commissioner Simon. Commissioner Nelson. Here. Commissioner Bird. Present. And Commissioner Kelleher. Present. All are present. So we're going to proceed with the agenda as been submitted in the board material that was sent to you and we will follow it accordingly. There have been no adjustments or changes to the agenda that was sent to you. Now, the first thing we will have is a report of the executive director. Sure. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, this uh, executive director's report will largely consist of COVID-19 related updates, uh, some of which you are aware, but, uh, but wanted to sort of bring it, um, bring it as, as present as possible. So uh, overall, uh, we are continuing our social distancing protocols. Um, that means for us that our offices remain closed to the public uh, and the vast majority of our employees are participating in remote work. Uh, at this time, only designated employees are permitted to work from HOC's officers and only as scheduled. Um, we've actually taken some additional safety measures, uh, including uh, continuing frequent sanitizing of common areas in our offices. We're requiring customers to call in or email us rather than visit our offices in person. Uh, we're collecting packages, uh, including customer packets in secure bins at the front of every single HOC office. Uh, we're sanitizing the HOC fleet on a regular basis, and uh, we are regularly disseminating uh, personal protective equipment to frontline staff and uh, ensuring that folks are, are are using it properly and wearing it properly. Um, so as of April 16th, all staff that were operating from, from uh, offices or properties have been required to wear masks while in the workplace. Uh, and those are made available to those employees as well as instructions for cleaning and making masks um, were distributed to, to all staff. So, um, you know, at least for the next few weeks, um, this is probably going to continue as is, uh, perhaps with some some uh, additional enhancements. Certainly, we'll let you know uh, if and when those take place. Um, I wanted to kind of turn to HUD, uh, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. So they published notices addressing public housing and housing choice voucher waivers. Um, I want to point out that we were among the first housing authorities to directly request some of these waivers. Uh, and, and so on April 10th, uh, HUD published notice, uh, PIH notice 2020-05, um, COVID-19 statutory regulatory waivers for the public housing and housing choice operating, uh, housing, housing choice voucher program, pardon me. So what this notice did was provide HOC and other housing authorities with the flexibility to adjust our program practices to prioritize mission critical functions um, given that normal operations were restricted uh, and severely constrained. Uh, our agency has elected to apply uh, many of the waivers in the notice, uh, obviously to ease our administrative burden um, with regard to customers and staff and trying to reduce, do our part to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Uh, notably, we're allowing customers to self-certify income. We're conducting virtual briefings and delaying annual recertifications when customers cannot comply with the program requirements. But we're also permitting landlords to self-certify under limited circumstances uh, with respect to the housing quality standards inspections. Uh, and we're doing that to, to further limit our, uh, our entry and our agents entry into uh, customer units. Um, we're trying to uh, continue providing flexibility uh, uh, to customers as well. Um, and, and as you all know, there is um, an eviction moratorium and as well there should be. Um, most of our customers uh, 
um, and many other uh, residents of Montgomery County have been impacted uh, by this by this public health crisis in one way or another. And so, uh, as we've discussed, uh, customers uh, who are having challenges paying rent timely uh, have some options. And so we we're we're continuing to provide those options, um, which we're working hard to try and keep people housed. Um, and we continue to work with our partners at uh, at the county, at DHCA in particular, uh, and then at state as well to um, to come up with remedies to to continue addressing these challenges folks are having. Um, additionally, uh, we're we are enhancing and changing our service coordination uh, so that we can continue to uh, support customers, but but. Um, Quite frankly, we're not holding uh, in-person events, uh, which is uh, uh, causing us to uh, reformat to make wellness calls and do wellness checks uh, on, on staff. We are uh, disseminating to persons uh, who are most vulnerable um, uh, produce uh, and, and food uh, delivery. Um, we're, we're actually now um, sort of regenning that to make sure that we're we're, we're getting uh, seniors uh, paper goods and and um, other things so that folks who are uh, who are really uh, income constrained um, also have uh, not only food but the the other things that they need to to uh, continue to shelter in place. Um, and so there are a couple other things that we we continue to do uh, as you all know that uh, Corona virus aid relief. Uh, Economic Security Act uh, has has um, caused funding to be available for state and local entities in Maryland, and that was released in, in mid-April. Uh, there's somewhere around 37.6 million in public housing and, and rental assistance grants. There's another 26.2 million for local governments for community development block grant, and then there's 28 uh, 22.8 million to local government governments for homeless assistance. Montgomery County itself is, uh, will receive 2.9 million and 1.4 million in, in community development block grant and homeless assistance funding respectively. Um, and, and so uh, because HOC is a member of the Montgomery Housing Alliance, uh, there's been ongoing conversation about um, disbursement of uh, those, um, those monies. Uh, I think that the county is working hard to figure out how to disseminate them and, and to whom. Uh, and so those, you know, I think that you know, we're going to start to see some of that that relief uh, um, quite soon. That said, um, uh, folks are continuing in HOC among them to consider uh, what more can be done uh, timely and even ahead of, of uh, this real this tsunami of need. Um, uh, to assist affordable housing entities as well as the, the um, customers in, in Montgomery County. So um, with that, I, I wanted to point out that there has been uh, there's been a, um, a number of state legislators uh, who called on the governor to cancel rent and mortgage payments. Um, while we recognize uh, as staff the, the challenges uh, that folks are having I'm not quite sure I'm prepared to say that uh, canceling rent and mortgage payments is is um, an actual solution. Um, I mean, at some point, uh, you know, those are going to have to be uh, paid. And and quite frankly, for us, uh, as you all very well know, um, we're in the middle of budget, uh, and you know, non-payment of rent, cancellation of rent, um, would cause a catastrophic. Uh, impact to this agency and our ability to keep people housed and get more folks housed. So, um, you know, we're we're waiting um, to see what gets done here. There have been no signals from the state that um, executive branch, at least, uh, that that uh, rent cancellation and mortgage cancellation are among the things, uh, the remedies that are that are being actively considered. Um, and so. Um, there are, you know, a number of other things that we can talk about related to COVID. Um, I think you're we, we try and keep you aware of it. Uh, we will continue to keep you aware of it. I, I wanted to actually offer up one piece of um, good news, and that is 
uh, that there's actually a, a phase two coming of the Montgomery County Homeownership Assistance Fund. Um, uh, um, we actually opened it on uh, January 21st. Um, and so the Montgomery County Homeownership Assistance Fund provides down payment and closing assistance funds for eligible first time home buyers in Montgomery County. We've used this in conjunction with our own mortgage per, uh, purchase programs, first mortgage uh, loan. Um, and uh, as of April 30th, um, we've actually provided 39 households with incomes ranging from 38,000 to 140, just, just under 141,000, uh, an average secondary loan of, of somewhere around $23,000. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to continue the partnership. We're continuing to make progress. I will tell you, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, uh, in the future, um, uh, there might be some dip in, in uh, home purchasing for, for a time, but um, what we know is that this program has worked quite well for Montgomery County citizens. So with that, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you back some time. Very good. Are there any questions from commissioners? I have one. Go ahead. Mr. Spahn, is anyone from uh, the delegation that's been recommending the rent canceling reached out to ask how this would impact a housing agency like HOC differently than no. perhaps a private no. entity? So they may yeah. not, they may not have uh, even thought about the impact that that could have on an organization like HOC. I mean, I, I, I think, um, well, first off, Montgomery County has a fair number of um, affordable housing providers. And so it, even if not HOC, there are you know, quite a number of others. Uh, sure. and, and what I can tell you is um, in, my, in my conversations, I've not actually uh, gotten any indication that, that the delegation reached out. Th those who are supporting this or signing on to it have reached out to anyone uh, about it. I think you know, what they're attempting to do is, is um, they see a problem, um, they recognize the challenges that uh, the families are dealing with, and, you know, what feels like the immediate right thing to do, uh, and, and we're hearing this nationally as well, is, a, you know, cancel rent and cancel mortgage payments. Um, and so, you know, I certainly understand the dilemma, um, and, you know, I politely disagree with, um, with whether or not it's actually a solution. What's the, go ahead. By next Listen. month, could we have um, some information on what rent collections have looked like um, under these conditions relative to what a normal April, May, June would have looked like? So we have a sense of how that is shaping up. Uh, it occurs to me that our senior housing may do quite fine since social security payments, disability payments are still going out and in fact getting maybe supplemental. So it may be the multifamily housing where people are losing jobs um, and seeing income dips where we have more problems. It just seems like it would be worth looking at that data. Um, uh, we're looking at it. We, we can certainly provide a report. Um, you know, not sure. Uh, I mean, and, I, and I'll include some of the information, some of it in limited form in my uh, executive director's report. Um, as you know, we're in the middle of budget, so we're we're also due to have that conversation with the uh, budget finance and audit committee. So, yeah, that's um, great. I just think the full commission should have some idea how this is materializing and how sure. fast it may or yeah. may not be a problem, because as you <clears throat> noted. I mean, we still have to pay our mortgages and uh, put aside the funds for a bond. So uh, it would be good to know if this is going to be a short-term problem, a medium-term problem, a long-term problem, and kind of what the magnitude of it is. Uh, absolutely. So um, first, uh, yes, uh, and, and just uh, as a reminder, all commissioners get the entire um, committee packet. Um, and with regard to the data, or, you know, it'll be provided. We're going to um, 
you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, give you misinformation and I certainly don't want to fuel uh, whatever misinformation. Right. I don't, I can't say definitively whether it's a short, long uh, or intermediate term problem. What I can say is um, whatever, whatever we've missed in rent, um, we're, we're going to actively and, and are already actively engaging with customers um, and trying to enter into repayment agreements. Uh, uh, but we should note that, that we're not going to be able to collect uh, all of those repayments. And so it's, you know, how do we mitigate um, uh, losses and, and, and try and keep people, families and individuals in this county housed? Okay, we'll look for something next month then. I think Commissioner Kroom was raising her hand. Thank you, Stacey. Um, I was looking here on the um, the COVID, I was reading the COVID uh, update, and I see here that you have um, where the rent payments can, um, be, you can still use the secure uh, drop boxes at the uh, HOC rent payment locations. And I don't know if a letter went out, but they just sent, cause I mailed off a couple of payments for other people at the uh, Middlebrook office. And then they sent the letter back and said, they sent, they made a call to me on my cell phone today and said that they're sending it back because that area is not accepting rent. It's the deer part. So did a letter come out to say that it will, that you had different locations to pay your rent? Letters have gone out to, to customers, yes. I, I mean, I'd have to know more about that specific, um, uh, those specific instances, but I, I mean, we're obviously we're gonna work with customers as we need to. Yeah, because there are some some residents that have paid their rent, okay? We well, certainly believe that. So, right. and, and there'll be a, so the system, the way the system's set up is, if the rent's not, you know, in a particular time, for whatever reason, that could be, you know, it could be clerical error, right? The, the, the letters automatically go out. Um, it doesn't, it, all it means is it's a signal to that customer to give us a call. If a customer insists that the rent has been paid and, and in fact, um, as with any other um, uh, creditor, debtor, uh, we're going to uh, apologize for the error and the inconvenience um, and, uh, and and work to correct it. Now, what, what won't happen um, is that folks are not going to be evicted. We're not going to be taking um, eviction action, and you know, in the mm -hmm. event that um, you know, now if there someone hasn't paid, we're going to continue the process, but no one's going to be removed from there. From their but what I'm saying, um, if the rent has already been paid, why are they sending it back? Because that's that in itself can be part of this disease that's going to. Why can't they just keep it, even though that was the wrong place that they paid it? They paid it at the middle book, but it's supposed to go to Deer Park, so it's going to be mailed. It's going to be sent back. That's like you know, that's a lot of going around. I understand. When they could have picked it up and took it to the Deer Park, done. And so that's why, so when I let, when I started, I said, I, I need to know a little bit more about it. So what I'm going to do is give you a call so that we can figure out exactly those cases and, and we'll make the correction. I, I don't, that certainly doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. So I no, it it don't. we'll sort it out. Thank you, Stacey. Sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, Stacey, did the letter that went to residents indicate the location for payment of rent? Certainly should have. I mean, everyone, every customer has been. Uh, who, who is normally paying rent is a, is uh, alerted of, of of where they pay the rent. So not again. I, I need to know. Doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. So I want to be very clear about that. Um, we are we are not infallible. Uh, so you know I'll get from Commissioner Kroom the the information. And we'll track it, and then you know we'll we'll figure it out. It means it may mean we need to look at how we centralize uh, mail collection. I'm assuming it was dropped in. Um, in a drop box. Uh, so, you know, mail collection, but also circulation and collection of items that are that are uh, in drop boxes. So we'll, 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 we'll sort it out. Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, 
before we go to the next item on the agenda, which is the commissioner's exchange, I should two things. One, I should acknowledge from the very beginning that I'm Roy Priest, the chair of the commission when I first started the meeting. Secondly, also should acknowledge the fact that we are not live streaming this, this meeting today because of some technical difficulties, but the person will be able to access this information by going onto our website. So it, it will be made available for anyone who wants to see the proceedings that occur today. Uh, so with that information, I wanna just go ahead with the agenda. Uh, the next one is the commissioner's exchange. There are no items to come before this part of the agenda. Uh, I would note that normally we would then have the resident advisory board and uh, also receive comments from the community. But due to the uh, COVID-19 situation, we are in fact not able to do those things, but please refer to our, to our website for more information. Uh, the next item of the agenda. Roy, Roy, I'm sorry for interrupting. It, it just hit me. I think that uh, particularly during this period, uh, I think it would be appropriate if, uh, Stacy, you could communicate to the staff that the commission is appreciative of all of the extraordinary efforts that they are currently undertaking in view of this, uh, how they are adapting to change, how they're uh, accommodating uh, the, the folks that we serve. I mean, it's it's not an easy thing to do and then have to deal with your own personal life on the side. So I think that uh, as a commission, uh, we should express our appreciation to the staff for what they've done. Um, well, Commissioner, thank you. I mean, we really, I mean, on behalf of the team, um, uh, we appreciate that. Uh, I, I can't, I mean, they're working hard and I, I've said, uh, conveyed to, I think the entire team and our all staff, you know, I, there's not another team that I'd, I'd, I'd rather go through this with. And, and, um, you know, it, it has been interesting. It, and, you know, it continues to unfold, um, every single day, but, um, you know, but we've been able to, to manage through it with you all support and, uh, and we'll continue to do so. And just as a quick reminder, a quick note, uh, although we're not live streaming this, we always do a call in number. So um, persons who, you know, can't view it because we're having technical difficulty can actually listen to it to it via a call number, which was circulated uh, and is posted also on the web. So, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, it's our fail safe. Um, so, uh, and I also want to point out that, you know, we were able to stand this up and convert to uh, virtually uh, a hundred percent, ninety percent remote workplace. You know, within a within the matter of of uh, of two weeks, and and so um, that that is not an easy task. And so these uh, technical difficulties are are frustrating, but also remind us how how far we've come in such a short short time. So apologize for inconveniences. Um, super happy uh, that uh, the staff continues to work really really hard. And um, you know we're also obviously thankful that um, everyone, for the most part, is healthy. Uh, and um, and thanks for your support as well. And thank you, Commissioner Nelson. Also, want just to note to uh, say something about commissioners as well, because the work of the agency goes on. And I want to thank the commissioners for continuing the committee work that continues to go on uh, during this period. So fortunately, we are learning uh, some new technology. We also are learning to live in a Zoom environment. Uh, or whatever type of technology we're using. But I want to thank the commissioners for their ongoing involvement, engagement to assure the work gets done. So I uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, with that, I would like to move the agenda to the approval of the minutes. These are approval of the minutes of April 1st and also the approval of the minutes of April 1st in the administrative session. Can I get a motion? So moved. Uh, Ms. Nelson. Thank you. Uh, Second. Seconded, seconded by Commissioner Simon. Commissioner Simon, let me get a roll call vote in terms of those motion in a second. Uh, Commissioner Kroon. Aye. Commissioner Simon. Aye. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Bird. Aye. Commissioner Kelleher. Aye. And Commissioner Preach. Aye. 
and the unanimous vote to approve the minutes of April 1st uh, for both meetings. Uh, so we'll proceed with the next item on the agenda, which are committee reports. The first committee report will come from the Development and Finance Committee. Chairman Simon. The first item that we have before us is the approval to select demolition services to complete the demolition uh, at the mattress firm site uh, in Wheaton. And um, I'm not sure who is presenting this from staff. Marcus Irvin. Okay. All right. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, Marcus, Irvin, uh, Marcus Irvin for the record. Um, here this evening to present the approval to select uh, Demolition Services Incorporated, um, also known as DSI, to complete the demolition of the adjacent mattress firm site and approval of a change order to increase the demolition budget and contract value for DSI uh, to include the mattress firm site. Um, quick uh, summary notes. Uh, on May 8, 2019, the commission had approved uh, via resolution 19-54, uh, which authorized the funding for the demolition of the Ambassador Apartments um, in Emory Grove Village. The resolution authorized the executive director to enter into a contract uh, with DSI to raise the ambassador and authorize a funding level of uh, 747,766, which constituted DSI's contract amount of about 679,787, uh, plus a 10% contingency. Um, this was subsequently uh, increased in another during another commission action to 815,745, and this was funded um, entirely. million three. Um, a contract for the demolition of the ambassador uh, was awarded to DSI on May 8, uh, 2019. Uh, sh shortly after the commencement of the ambassador um, in December of 2019, uh, staff had consulted with Montgomery County's Department of Housing and Community Affairs uh, regarding the use of the remaining CIP funds for demolition of the adjacent mattress firm site uh, and subsequently received approval uh, from the county's Office of uh, Budget and Management, Management and Budget, uh, to utilize the information funds for that purpose. Uh, staff uh, quickly solicited bids for demolition services uh, from three contractors, including uh, DSI, uh, who was um, responsible for the Ambassador demo, uh, Dabco Construction Incorporated, and also Atlantic Environmental Services, Environmental Solutions. Uh, DSI represented the lowest and most qualified bidder for demolition of the mattress firm site uh, with a bid in the amount of 133509 At the Development and Finance Committee meeting on April 24th. <laughs> That's not my puppy. <laughs> Go ahead and plug it. Okay. At the uh, Development and Finance Committee uh, meeting on April 24th, 2020, uh, staff requested an increase to the DSI contract uh, for demolition of Ambassador Apartments by 133509 and a corresponding increase to the development budget um, and contract value to complete uh, the demolition of the mattress firm site. Uh, staff recommends that the Commission accept the recommendation of the Development and Finance Committee and approve an increase uh, to the DSI contract for uh, approve an increase to the contract of the ambassador by the 133509 via change order and a corresponding increase to the development budget um, to complete the mattress firm site. Uh, once approved, the total contract value would increase by an amount not to exceed uh, 949254 um, and an overall budget um, is estimated to be uh, 1278 uh, 826. Um, at this time, I'll take any uh, questions you may have. This is Commissioner Bird, uh, Marcus. On page, on the first page, just want to be clear on the numbers. So we talk about Emory Grove in here. Uh, what are, is the total 679 for both demolition of Emory Grove and uh, the ambassador? Or is it the 747K? Uh, 
the the six seventy the six seventy nine. Uh, let me see. Let me just reread this again. Uh, with the it's only for the, for the ambassador. The, uh, ambassador. the contract for Amagrove is with a separate, a different contractor. Yeah, that's just a little confusing because it kind of reads like uh, we're talking about both, and this is strictly for the ambassador, correct? This uh, seven hundred and forty-seven thousand. Yeah. Okay. Are there yeah. any other anticipated uh, costs Questions? after we do the matchers store, or this is it? Uh, yep. Yeah. We've set aside some uh, some amount of funds for site beautification. Um, we've uh, we had a call with our uh, PR consultants about uh, you know beautifying the site um, as a way to just uh, boost morale throughout the community. So we are um, in the early stages of looking at ways either through um, uh, materiality just at the site, whether it's fencing or um, erecting something um, to that effect to. Uh, uplift that corner once the site's been raised. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Marcus, uh, on that last point, I will remind you, as I've raised, uh, said before, we got to be careful in terms of what we do if you intend to eventually remove it, because it's hard to remove things once they're Put into a neighborhood and accepted by the neighborhood. So just keep that in mind. Good point. I would echo so, that, Commissioner Nelson. Yes, we're uh, very preliminarily, so we'll definitely uh, bring something to you when we uh, reach that stage and determine what the best way to do it or um, how to execute that. But we'll definitely keep that in mind. If if there are no further questions. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 20-36 approval of demolition demolition services for the mattress firm site? Mr. Kelleher will uh, move that we approve demolition of the mattress firm site and the funding requested of 679-787 for that purpose. Rick Nelson, um, wait a minute. Right. The number 2036. The resolution number. 2036. Yes, thank you. I was I hadn't turned the page to that resolution number 20. I second that in motion. 2036. It's been properly moved and seconded. Are there any questions? All in favor, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Kroon? Aye. Commissioner Simon? Aye. Commissioner Nelson? Aye. Commissioner Bird? Aye. Commissioner Kelleher? Aye. Commissioner Priest? Aye. Unanimously approves Resolution 2036. The next item uh, for review is Resolution 2037. Commissioner Simon? Um, mm. We're moving now to the HOC headquarters and approval of mandatory referral application submission and to increase the pre-development budget and to draw on PNC Bank's line of credit to fund the second installment of pre-development. Um, Corrine, are you or Zach going to present this? This one will be presented by Jay Shepard and we'll um, answer questions as you wish along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Kayreen. Hi, commissioners. Uh, this is Jay Shepard in real estate development. Uh, good afternoon. I was, so I'm gonna walk you through this uh, packet and uh, if we have questions, uh, we, can, we can answer those at any point or at the end. Uh, this, this item actually does have two resolutions. I'll just point that out. So at the end, uh, there's an A and B to the resolutions. And so, in, in summary, uh, or in, in sort of give you a quick summary um, before we get into it, the this is this is bringing back the item um, for that's already been to the commission before on April third uh, uh, last year. You you authorized the ex, uh, executive director to sign a ground lease with Promark for the development of uh, the the site in Silver Spring, which is the location for the 
uh, where, where the HSC plans to put its new headquarters. And this is at 2nd Avenue and Fenwick Lane, about two blocks north northwest of the uh, Silver Spring Metro Station. And in July of last year, we executed that lease and we began designing and beginning uh, entitlement processes for uh, what would be the new headquarters building. Uh, as of right, we can build up to 83,550 square feet. And when we first got started, we were looking at potentially building a larger building since we had to go through entitlement anyway, uh, and bringing other tenants in with HOC who would have compatible missions um, to our agency. However, due to the cost of high rise construction and the lack of pre-leasing that we were experiencing from other non-profit tenants, as well as the benefit from a shorter, shorter entitlement period if no other tenants in, were involved, and staff were able to pursue a mandatory referral uh, or route. Um, in conjunction with Promark, who's our development partner, uh, we, we came to the conclusion and are recommending to the commission that we submit an application for that mandatory referral uh, for the site and take it through that process instead of the typical uh, site plan process. Um, further, by pursuing a shorter path for completion under mandatory referral, with simply a government building, HOC can expedite delivery of the building, thereby reducing pre-development costs and minimizing development period risk, which is a real risk as for any project, but uh, certainly that helps reduce project uncertainty in this environment. Um, September 5th, we, uh, uh, the year prior in 2018, we had approved a first installment of development funding for this project up to $264,500 that came off the uh, PNC $60 million line of credit as a source for that. And so this request is to not only submit the application for the mandatory referral route, but also to uh, take a second tranche from the line of credit as well as walk through the uh, an in, a short increase or small increase to the uh, development budget overall. And really the change is relatively minor. What we're doing was pulling forward some costs related to permitting and application fees, which are being required uh, earlier in the process than, uh, than at the end, which it was highlighted in the development budget previously. Slide 38 is your mandatory referral process, and that is an overview of the process. Um, slide 39 is a site context, which does give relation to Elizabeth Square, uh, right across the street, which we're, we're underway with construction right now. Slide 40. And 41 start to show the envelope and then potential massing options uh, for the site and how it would fit under mandatory referral in the as of right zoning. So we're building it with the height restrictions and the gross square footage allowances that exist at the site uh, today, um, but it will still have to go through the process of uh, mandatory referral, which will allow for um, design and impact changes uh, over that process. Um, we're, we're taking into consideration factors of sunlight uh, throughout the day, how we cast shadows, how shadows are cast on this building, uh, how we can optimize transparency and uh, really create functional floor plates that will allow the agency to be uh, not only efficient uh, in those floor plates, but also promote employee wellness, uh, that, that's a big deal. Um, we've been looking at rooftop access and rooftop um, areas that will allow green space and other amenity type space in those, in those locations so that employees can also benefit from those uh, and create a really nice work environment. Um, we've also, well, go to slide um, 42. Uh, this is a very early conceptual way of, of blocking in spaces. 
Uh, the building on the first floor will house the Silver Spring Service Center, which is currently over at 880 Bonifant. And that will move into the space. It will have a lobby and the HRD staff um, in that location, and uh, as well as some other amenities on the on the first floor. We're actually, building mechanical related activities, and then the second floor, which is slide 43 of your packet, shows blocking areas right now of conceptually where. We, we know these functions have to have to occur in the building. We know that they're better if they're lower in the building, like the hearing room, the new hearing room, the new commissioner's lounge, uh, fitness related space, uh, pre function space, training rooms and building support, which is really mechanical, electrical, uh, plumbing related items. And and so how these fit together, how uh, they envision flow of both staff as well as exterior stakeholders into the building and how we control that and secure that is, is very important. And so those are some of the considerations that we're going through now and will be fleshed out as we get into the, the application process with mandatory referral. So, Jay, I think um, um, we'll have uh, many more opportunities to, um, to talk to the commission about um, the design of the building and um, and come back and talk through various uh, parts of it. Okay. But for now, we really do um, want the commission's approval to move forward with submitting the mandatory referral application and, and um, approval of the budget and, and funding. Um, and we're really excited and um, welcome the commission's input uh, along the way if, if, if there are um, uh, additional input and comments. And um, if your questions uh, at this point, we'll take them as well. I I think uh, Commissioner Kelleher sent some very constructive um, suggestions that I hope the staff can give um, serious consideration to. I think all of them um, provide, and each of them provides an enhancement, and um, I don't know that it impacts the filing for the mandatory referral at all, um, but I'll look forward to seeing how these can be in, those suggestions can be incorporated into the um, plans as they develop. And they were provided to uh, they were sent to Patrice. Uh, the, I sent them to Stacy. Okay. Right. Well, I, I copied excellent. Jackie as uh, I emailed them to Stacy. Okay. I copied Jackie. Right the chair of this committee and also Roy as the chair of the commission. Okay. We'll make sure, um, yes, we'll, um, we'll certainly um, collect them from, from the executive director and incorporate them in our plans as we move through the process. Okay, the, uh, the biggest one that might affect what you're doing now would be to move the loading dock from the side of the property that adjoins a residential building around to the side that adjoins the parking garage to take all of that noise and issue away from neighbors whose living rooms and porches are gonna be nearby and put it on a parking garage side where it won't uh, bother people. The rest are um, much more related to the interior uh, layout or the front entry and are things like whether or not you could have a drop-off space for metro access taxis and ubers um, and having an awning that comes out by the front door for people to stand under you know those kinds of things i i, I don't know about the drop-off space the awning is fairly cosmetic and could be worked out later the other ones about spacing um, involved things like moving the hearing room to the first floor because that would help with public access and limit the number of people needing to go up to an additional floor, et cetera. But I would be happy to send them to whoever. I wasn't quite sure how to provide the information or when it was gonna be helpful. So I just dashed off a one page note and literally did some markups on a drawing and I can send it to whomever you would like me to send it to. I, I, 
I'm speaking to the director. That's fine. We'll um we'll work with him on these comments. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions from the commissioners relative to this matter? I move approval of resolution 20-37A. It's been moved as a second. Second. Commissioner Simon. Moved. Probably moved and seconded. Moved by Commissioner Nelson, seconded by Commissioner Simon. Any questions? All in favor, I will make a roll call again. Commissioner Coombe. Commissioner Simon. Aye. Commissioner Nelson. Aye. Commissioner Bird. Abstain. Commissioner Kelleher. Aye. Commissioner Priest. Aye. Approve with five yeas, one abstention. Um, Commissioner Crum says um, I will uh, sustain as well. Okay. So two, sustain, two people sustained, and then there were mm -hmm. four affirmative votes. Um, motion carries. The next item is for the second motion, which is Resolution 2037B. This provides. This provides for the approval to draw on PNC Bank's line of credit to fund the second installment of the pre-development. That's correct. Okay, that was that was discussed during the earlier presentation. Is there a motion to approve Resolution 20-37B? I I move to approve it. Um, except it appears that it in the packet it says resolution 20-37a oh it says no. there's oh, a sorry. separate resolution no no, no I, I i misread the b i it, it looked to me it's like a pretty that. little b yes it is it, <laughs> i thought it was another a i apologize i move um, approval of resolution 20-37b second commissioner simon move by Commissioner Nelson, seconded by Commissioner Simon. Any questions? If none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Kroon? I approve. Commissioner Simon? Aye. Commissioner Nelson? Aye. Oh, that's right. Commissioner Bird? Abstain. Uh, Commissioner Kelleher? Aye. And Commissioner Priest? Aye. There one one abstention. Affirmative motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are no other committee reports to come before the commission tonight. Uh, but we are at a point to be able to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Keller. I move that that we adjourn the meeting pursuant to section 3-305B of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland. I move to adjourn this open session to a closed session in order to comply with a specific constitutional, statutory, judiciarily imposed requirement that prevents public disclosures about a particular proceeding or matter. It's been moved, do we have a second? Second, Commissioner second. Simon. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. Any questions? Those in favor? Commissioner Kroon? Aye. Commissioner Simon? Aye. Commissioner Nelson? Aye. Commissioner Bird? Aye. Commissioner Kelleher? Aye. Commissioner Priest? Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you all very much for your participation in this meeting. And we have to uh, sign in again for the admin session, just to remind everybody. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. See you in a second. A moment. Okay.